all right uh, welcome back uh, let us start the discussion on the topic ad hoc on demand distance vector this is also a reactive protocol it has an advantage over the dsr protocol in the previous video we have uh, learned about dsr protocol if you haven't watched my last video i would highly recommend you to watch that video i will drop the video link in the description please do check that so in the last video uh, we were passing the route request packet to the neighbors in that uh, packet we were uh, even passing the path right so that data packet was containing data as well as the path so suppose that the network is going it has a huge network suppose that we have a network which is very huge then the path would increase right then this would be not be optimal as the network size grows length of the path also increases as network size grows route path also increased data packets header also increase so this is not an effective solution so there has to be some alternative protocol over this dsr protocol so uh, we have come up with this topic right so this is the theoretical information about this uh, protocol once we have gone through this uh, you know example please do check these notes i will drop these notes in the description you will understand it better okay uh, so what we are now doing is we are actually passing a packet suppose this is a network we want uh, data from a to be passed to e so a has to send some packet to e but this packet will not contain the path okay our main aim is to remove that path right because if path is existing in in case of huge networks then that would be a bigger one okay so we are sending some packet what all that packet contains is source address source sequence number broadcast id destination address destination sequence number and hop count so initially the source will pass this packet to the neighbor so neighbor will check this if nothing it can do it will increase the hop count and it will pass to the next neighbor so we will understand it with an example suppose a has created a packet source address id okay another id uh, we have two ids right Achha, source sequence number and broadcast id the second one is the source sequence number okay. destination will also have one sequence number once this packet reaches the destination it will respond with its uh, sequence number so source i uh, source address source uh, what is this mm. source sequence number next id then destination address destination sequence number and hop count so this packet is created with a now this packet will be passed to c okay now c will note one thing it will create a route table it will tell if the destination is a if i have to go to a the next hop should be a hop is one and the sequence uh, number of a is one okay c checking its routing table if it has already uh, valid route to e it reply so uh, it doesn't have any valid route to e now after adding this in the you know routing table this will forward the packet by increasing the hop count now hop count uh, is increased okay now it will be passed to this one okay what it will do it will again increase the hop count so that it can pass to e so it doesn't have any information about e it will add the information about a in its routing table if d has to reach a it has to go to c in the next step hop count is two like one and two sequence of uh, sequence number of a is one okay it will increase the hop count when it came from c it was one it will increase it to two or no this will be passed to e okay uh, e now e will uh, note it in the routing table if it has to go to a next step would be d hop count will be three sequence number of a is one now the packet from here to here it is reached now it will send the reply packet you will create a packet the syntax of reply packet will be different from that of the request packet if you can see this uh, destination reply uh, using r reply uh, source address 
destination address, destination sequence number, hop count. Okay, so source address, this is the source address, destination address, okay, so uh, sequence number, this is the sequence number of E, then hop count. Now this will be passed to D. D will not have uh, D will have information about A. Okay, D will have information about A. D will uh, in order to go to A, it has to go to C. So this will pass it to C. It will also update the information about E in the routing table. Okay. Uh, D will receive this. It has information in the route table. It will pass to here. It will update in the route table. Now C also does the same thing. C has information about A. It will pass here. It will also update the information about E in the routing table. Now the packet has reached to A. Now if you can observe in this packets reply packet and request packet we haven't stored the path. The path is being stored by the nodes in its routing tables and they have created this routing table whenever the packet has to send this data. Okay. This is a reactive protocol better than the DSR. We have seen the disadvantage of DSR. Hope you understood this algorithm. See you in the next video. In the next video, we will be discussing about the hybrid protocol that is ZRP.